lady in the frog here just washed my hair so it is still a little damp um it's supposed to be torrential rain today so i'm bound to get wet there is not a there is no rain so <laughs> there, in the light of there being no rain i'm going to get myself out there and try again with the sourcing thing although you know yesterday was a complete waste of time but i'm going to go on the tram um, and although I've been sort of like up early, I was aware that, you know, I don't need to get to the tram stop until like half past nine because that's when it goes into cheap rate. But I'm still faffing around and I haven't even done my post yet. Um, and I do have to do this post today, even though there's a Royal Mail strike on today, which is Thursday and tomorrow because it coincides with Black Friday and um, Black Friday, which means nothing to English people. I mean, do people in America get forced to have our bank holiday Monday sales? No, they don't, because it doesn't mean anything to them. Anyway, I have a whole load of stuff, not a whole load. Um, I have six things here which have been paid for. I've actually got around 11 orders from yesterday, but half of them are not paid. Just, what is the point? I've been accepting really reasonable offers and I, accepting reasonable offers means that you're just, you're doing business with an idiot. Right, so this, I've been back and forth with this person for ages and I think they actually sent me this offer ages ago. So the first thing that they offered me was £10 for this jacket, which is a reversible jacket. Um, it is actually All Saints, which you can see inside the pocket there. Um, but because it's reversible, it's all sort of hidden. Um, now this person is in America and they seem to sell a lot of All Saints. So they kept going back and forth with like stupid offers. And then I sent, I'd sent all my offers out yesterday evening and um, they counted at 25. So I took 25, I did have it up for 40, but obviously it hasn't sold. So it must be fine. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. Um, so, that's gone for 25 and then this is going to Canada. I knew I'd sell this fast. I don't know what it is about this specific set. So this is going to hold me up. I don't think I'm going to be at the tram stop until after 10, the rate I'm going, because I've now got to bust all that up and it's technics and it's a pain in the ass. So that's going to Canada and that was 22. Um, yeah, it, it, some of these technics, they just really surprised me. I have another Lego set here. This has gone for $12.99. This had like 20 watches. So I've, last night I just knocked up another one of these. Um, so I may well reuse some of the photos, but then I might not because there's always differences in the fading of it. Um, it's literally, the other one is over there. So I could show you what it is. It's a space set and it's just like a sort of like towing thing. The Sirens of Manchester. This I've had for ages, really nice colour and it's new with tags, but literally I've had loads of watches on it and never any sales. Obviously, otherwise it wouldn't still be here. So it, it's like one of these, you know, slip dress type things, but it is quite long. Yeah, so Topshop, how much did I accept for that? This was an offer and I accepted 15. I think that's the thing is that sometimes you just you're asking too much for things aren't you um i can't even remember how much this is sold for another dress this time it's sea salt sea salt prices have gone downhill i think i've only got 20 for that is what it is and then these which i will not pick up again a pair of jeans um top shop mum jeans um those have gone for 15 that's the one 15 pounds so even though there is strike action with royal mail and the last time there was strike action with royal mail ebay did allow for it on the dispatch time because i have a one-day dispatch and they allowed for it because i was like 
oh great, I don't technically have to dispatch anything until the Monday because it was like on a Friday or something like that. Um, but this time they haven't done anything. They know full well that there's strike action because they're still trying to push their partner um, because obviously they're in bed with every, which I just think is a bit disgusting, really. I don't think anybody should be in bed with every, but they're always trying to like make you use their services. And I just, I just don't think it's right that they're always trying to railroad you into using every, because it's, you know, I found, I've re there's a lot of people on Instagram who are moaning about the stuff which they sent with, uh, with, with the other carriers. And generally, Royal Mail, when they have strike action, they do try really hard to pull their finger out after the strike day has finished. So I've got no issues with sending it. Obviously, I've got two airmails, so I need to get the airmail numbers. So instead of me being able to walk directly to the tram stop, which is over there, which is a horrible tram stop anyway, I'm going to go to my usual post office because they are literally a street away from the sort from their sorting office so i th i think they're getting quite they're still getting regular collections even on strike days because i think they sort of they're quite kind with each other and whoever whoever is still working seems to just go and get their stuff because then even on the strike days they've never been like falling over bags and bags of um mail so i'm 100 percent going to be putting it over there not at any of these other places um and then i'm gonna go on the tram i'm gonna try and go to two areas although it's getting late now so um i'm not helping myself but that's what i'm intending to do and hopefully i'm probably on the way back gonna try and drop in at that place where I didn't get the other Lemony Snicket books because now having realised it, I needed book number five and probably a book number 12 because I've got enough to do another two sets if I get book 10, 8 and 5 and, you know, regardless of the fact that it's £2, I could just spend that £2 and then I can get it listed and if I put it on for a decent price... It's looking like now you can only get about, I've had mine on for 35 with free postage, but I'm, I've put my price down to 30 because I just think the arse has fallen out of that box set. So that's what I've done in the hope that I'll get it sold quicker and just trying to bust my set up so that it's flat. I hate opening these self steel bags because I always feel like I'm going to lose a load of pieces. <laughs> oh, right. What's going on here? You'd think I would know exactly what this is since I only built it again last night. I know it sounds like a bit daft and I probably could reuse this. However, I because there's always different um, fading on the parts, I tend to always photograph everything as it comes sometimes I, sometimes i have um reused photos but then i always take a picture of the mini figure you see i'm loath to use the pictures for this one because that's really faded and the one that i've the pieces that i've put out for the next one are not faded there's still lego everywhere but I feel that I do need to get out there and do some sourcing. Because I've become lazy with, about sourcing. So, I'm going to pack all this up and get cracking. Unfortunately, nothing to write home about. So, here I am, back again. 
that was supposed to like make me feel better going out today about everything and make me like feel buoyant again about going out sourcing and it's done the opposite it's made me very very anxious <laughs> i have literally come back well i've got no clothing even though i've been through all the clothing rails i've been to two areas i've got on the tram and i went to one area that place had nine charity shops and then I went to another area which has seven charity shops. The first area is like one of the lesser areas. We were actually talking about it the other day because me and my husband were like saying, well, you know, if we sold this place, because the house, the prices, the, the value of these flats have gone up. I said, if we were to sell this place and then go and move somewhere else, would you want to? And we were like, well, no, because then we don't end up having to live <laughs> such and such. But... It's one of those areas where everybody looks like really depressed and like they've got health problems and you know it's a really lowbrow area really but you wouldn't know that going around the charity shops because the prices have sailed up um and then the other place is an affluent area and the one place that i always used to get a really good amount of stuff from was sue rider and you know things are bad when you go into a place and suddenly all the wooden coat hangers have appeared. Everything's hanging on a wooden coat hanger. All the plastic mismatched ones have gone, have been relegated. <sighs> and all the prices have gone up. Literally everything is priced as much as you would get on eBay if not. You know, if you'd probably end up making a loss if you sold it on eBay because you probably couldn't sell it for that. So nobody's people will not be people will not be shopping in charity shops very soon. They'll be shopping on eBay because literally the prices that they are trying they think that they can get are ridiculous. Anyway, the only positives that I have are these flipping books. <laughs> so there's this one shop in this in the lesser area that I went to, which is where I went to first. And in there, they have this shop where you get books for free. You just have to donate. You allowed them. You can take a maximum of five books, and you have to donate. I honestly, I don't know why they don't just price their books because they'd probably do better with that. So. As it was yesterday when I was talking about these lemony snicket things, I looked at all the lemony snickets I've got and I realised what I needed to make another two sets. So I've got one set which is currently listed when I've dropped the price down to 30 and I've got the potential to do another two sets. All I needed was book number five, book number eight and book number ten. <laughs> and I need, I had, and I fancied getting another 20. 12 because one of them was a bit rough so three of those were from the place where you just had to donate so I just donated a pound for that I really wish I knew what other books I should be <laughs> picking up because that place is now very incredible you know just it's got that beautiful smell of um used books and everything's in alphabetical order whereas before it was just a bit carnage in there and then on the way back from the other place I dropped into the place that I went to yesterday because I realized it was number book five that I needed and I did need to get that 12 so I went back and got them you know for the exorbitant price of two pounds but for the way the way I see it is that gets me another two of those book sets so I can get them listed so yeah, so I, I've paid like five pounds for all that, but you know, it, it gets something out of the way which has been, you know, in the way for a long time. I'm sorry, Siobhan, I'm gonna have to move you. And then the rest of it, I was, it was just so disheartening, and I was just trawling around everything. And the last place that I went to, there was a jumper by Cheska and a dress by Cheska. But on looking carefully at them, they both had holes in them. And I was just like, I can't 
pay seven pounds for something which has got a hole in it i just can't do it the dress also had a belt missing so i was just like no i, I just i'm not going to do this to myself you know i mean maybe if i was just a bit more prissy and i was like willing to like pay five pounds for river island what am i saying the river island stuff was new with tags and it was 12. um the next stuff that they had that was at 10 pounds it was all just ridiculous have you got your belly out mate <laughs> <laughs> so there's only one thing that i've come back with and it's an unchecked jigsaw which i'm not really like absolutely thrilled to get um it says two pound fifty on it but he charged me 199 so that's okay so that's all i got um it's just i have no clue what is going on out there it's like i was saying in the video yesterday if there's people who truly need to rely on charity shops now to clothe themselves and to get things then it is a it, we're in a really tragic situation because honestly i they, they you could not go into any of those charity shops so bearing in mind nine and one and seven and another that's 14 charity shops that i've been in today and i've come out with nothing you know and i was willing to spend on decent stuff but it's not decent so yeah i'm quite disheartened i'm still thinking and I'm going to have to keep plugging on applying for jobs because this will not hold out. I can't hold out doing this. I just thought maybe I wasn't earning in as much as I used to because I haven't been outsourcing. I've been just going to my regular haunts and I haven't been going further afield. And I just, you know, I'm being lazy by not going further afield and going to my regular haunts. But the reason I go to my regular haunt is because it's not overpriced the stock is rotating all of these places they're turning people away for the donations because they're pricing their stuff so much that it turns into a museum i know the last time i went to this place it was a heat wave it was probably around july august when i last went and there was stuff there which was there previously and it has not sold so it just says it all about the mass. I mean, there's kind of, I know that they probably have quite high rents, but I have rent to pay, rent to pay. I have a mortgage to pay. And because of that, I, I accept, I, I have best offer, I accept offers, I send offers out because I just think I need the cash flow, I need the cash flow. And I just think, why don't these charity shops need the cash flow? Because there's loads of people who are like me who are just walking in there and just looking at it and just thinking, no, I'm not doing this to myself. If I want to buy myself a dress, I'm going to go to a shop and buy a dress brand new. I don't care what the make is because at least I know that it's not damaged and pre-used. So, yeah, not in a good place of <laughs> about reselling with the state of these charity shops. There was another place that I went to that used to be a pound shop and now it isn't a pound shop. And, <laughs> and they, were, they were all ranting and raving about their customers and slagging their customers off because they've got, they've, they've taken away a load of um, the actual like stock area so that they can just sit and have a cup of tea and slag people off. And they were actually slagging their customers off. And I was thinking, well, this is good. Well done, Salvation Army. Well done. I just can't I just can't wrap my head around a lot of it anyway I'm going to try and like keep my pecker up and I'm going to go to my normal haunt tomorrow which I should have just done that in the first place I should have just gone to my normal haunts I just wanted to spread my wings a bit it didn't work now I've got to do a jigsaw anyway I'm going to crack on with um, the rest of my, you know, the rest of my reselling business, which is just Lego. I mean, thank goodness for Lego. There was a job lot of Lego 
in uh, the Sue Rider that I was in, which you saw. Um, but I opened that box up and I had a look through it and it was all like half mega blocks, mostly modern, had some vintage bits in there, but it just wasn't, it just wasn't worth it. And I would have had to carry it, <laughs> you know, which if it would have been vintage, I would have carried it. There was another area which I could have gone to, but I was just feeling so disheartened after going in 14 cherish shops and coming back with a jigsaw and a couple of books um, that I just thought, no, I can't, this is, this is not happening now. Um, it was pouring with rain at that point as well. And I just thought I've got to go to a certain tram stop, which was on my route, but then I've got to walk a mile and then a mile back. And even even this area which is it it is a really shitty area there where you get people are, are drunk at like 10 a.m in this area it's that rough but because they have a mural of marcus rashford in the area now for some reason they've become a bit prissy and they've all put their prices up so sometimes i just think do i want to walk over there no, I don't. Um, and again, I don't think Marcus Rashford would be approving of charity shops booting up their price because they think that his mural makes it a bougie area. <sighs> anyway, that's my rant. And I think I'm entitled to have a rant because this is stupid. When you're, when you're going out there and you're willing to like spend the money, um, but you want to find the staff, um, it's just ridiculous. I'm not paying £10 for Next. If I want to go and pick up Next, I'm going to go over to Salford Keys and I'm going to go to the Next clearance <laughs> and probably find some really nice new with tags, fat face and other things. Anyway, another day, another disappointment. So I'll be back again tomorrow and hopefully tomorrow it will be a haul. You know, and when I say haul, it's not just going to be like, here's what I picked up today, having visited to 14 charity shops. One jigsaw. Ah. Right. I thank you for watching. I'm sorry that it's always like this. <laughs> I'm sorry that you're watching this. and You don't know how sorry I am. I'm just... <sighs> and why is my camera keep moving? I told you this was a portal. Right. I'll be back again. Let's kind of see what episode three of Sourcing in Manchester brings tomorrow. So, it's goodbye from me. Goodbye from Shivion or Sibiohan, as Simon likes to call him. And goodbye from Sean. And goodbye from me, Linda, the lady of Lady and the Fox. I'll be back again soon. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.